What's going on guys? It's your girl Angie Snatch coming at you with another episode of An Unbiased Truth, Decoding the Brother Polite Trial. And today we are going to get into an exclusive, a, a real true exclusive. So who remembers on October 11th, news broke that the prosecution had entered a new docket, a uh, discovery exhibit demanding an alibi, uh, demand, demanding discovery as well as a subpoena. So, I have that document in front of me. I have that document in front of me and I'm going to bring it to you guys so we can look over it together. I'm going to do this video in two parts. I have to be honest because this is a very large document. So, I want to start with today. We're going to start with part one of the document in which they list all of the witnesses that the prosecution plans to call thus far then we're going to do part two of the video which will go deeper into the evidence that the state is saying that they have in their possession um that is actually shocking i did not know that there was a 911 call recording i did not know that a search and seizure had been done i did not know that um there were property receipts of items from the hotel room. I didn't know that there were blood and urine uh, samples taken and that there was a whole dispatch audio. I mean, there's so much that is listed as their evidence that deserves a part two alone. So what we're going to get in today is part one of the discovery exhibit and get into who the witnesses are Get out your pen and paper. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Uh, welcome back to all of my Snatch gang. And thank you so much to Sister Didi and Timothy Wells for your donations. I truly appreciate it. All right, let's get into it, guys. I know I've been gone, but it wasn't for nothing. So, let's start with page one. If you remember in the last video when I talked about um, what a demand for alibi would look like, it's pretty much exactly what I said. So the first page just goes over those criminal rules and criminal procedures and fact check me, it says criminal code 3.220. So to the guy that tried to come at me in my comments, Go back under your comment and apologize. Thank you. <laughs> but pretty standard there. Now, let me zoom in on page one so we can get into the witnesses that they have for page one. So first starting off, 001 through 004, those are Miami Beach Police Department police officers. Now, those names stood out to me because they were listed on page five of the original police report. I did a breakdown already on that police report. I'm going to call myself out on a few things that I was wrong about in the next video um, in that transport portion. So... 001 through 004, those four officers, I'll read their names, uh, Gutierrez, Pedra, Silk, and Cordoba, those are the officers that had the body-worn camera when they responded. So those are the officers that responded to the victim. Cordoba actually wrote the report. You'll see Cordoba, uh, it's a woman, you'll see Cordoba's signature on that actual police report. So 001 through 004, those are Miami Beach Police Department officers, the officers that have the body-worn camera. Now 005 and 006 should look familiar to everyone because that is TS, the minor, alleged victim in this case, and her mother, uh, Linda Orocho. Oh, sorry, I thought I pulled that back up for you. Let me go back so you can see it. Okay, 005 and 006, that is T.S. the minor and her mother, uh, Linda Orocho. So now let's go into page two. I think page two is interesting as well. So on page two, you see at the top, you see Alberto Gonzalez, 
007. Now, Alberto Gonzalez is a sergeant with the uh, Miami Beach Police Department. Then you have 008, Angel Pedra, 009, Franklin Silk. They were listed on page one. Now, I believe that they're listed again because they have taken another statement. So one part that those first four may have been coinciding with the body-worn cameras and they may be providing other testimony here for them to list them again. Okay, 0010, it's under the watermark, so you may not be able to see it clearly. That is Courtney Venetia. Courtney Venetia is a crime scene technician. So she actually worked on the crime scene. Then you have Timothy Hauser. He is a sergeant with the uh, Miami Beach Police Department as well. Now here's where it gets interesting. So you see 012012 carries the Watskas. And that is, oh, it's not blocked by the um, watermark. Great. Carrie Zawaskas is the director of operations at the Mondrian Hotel. Now, what you will notice as I'm reading this, and I'm sorry if this has a little echo. I don't have my headphones. Um, what you will notice is that the state does not call any witness from the Fontaine Blue. Now remember when I broke down the police report, I said the incident happened at the Mondrian Hotel and that the mother and daughter were staying at the Fontaine Blue. So there will be no witnesses called from the Fontaine Blue, at least not on the um, state side. Now we still don't know whether our Brother Polite uh, wants to call them or not. So under Timothy Hauser, we have Dr. Lisa Reddy, yeah, that's right. Dr. Lisa Reddy, she's 0013, she's an expert. She's coming from the University of Miami lab. She's an expert in pathology and laboratory medicine. Now, 004, let me zoom. I'm gonna pull this page up really quick so we can get into the rest of these names. Okay, so now I'm on the top right side of your screen, a little under the watermark. 0014, that is Susanna Agramonte. 0014, Susanna Agramonte. She is from the Roxy Bolton Rape Treatment Center. Remember in the police report, when I broke that down, the Roxy Bolton Rape Treatment Center is located in Jackson Memorial Hospital. 0016, let me go there uh, now. Directly under uh, Dr. Agramonte is Gabriella Mararu. Gabriella Mararu also works at the Roxy Bolton Rape Treatment Center. So they are both testifying from the Roxy Bolton Rape Treatment Center. So I'm going to assume that those are the people that care for her there. Now, we're going to move back over to 0015, Ely Elisa. That is a medical doctor from Mount Sinai Hospital. She is a medical physician at Mount Sinai Hospital. Now, 0017, Andrea Amy. That is a crime scene investigator. Remember I said that when we get into part two, that's when we'll talk about that search and seizure because they did uh, sweep that crime scene. So 0017, she is a crime scene investigator. Now I haven't figured out who 0018 Peter Wyatt is. Remember I said I've been digging. So I have to stick a pin in 0018. I, I'm assuming some he does something with Miami Beach Police Department, maybe in the crime scene investigators unit, but I didn't want to uh, say it and I wasn't sure. So moving on to page three. On page three at the top of your screen, you see uh, Pam Little... Pam Alicia Little, I apologize, and she is a forensic investigator. Now, 020, Dwayne Mitchell, he is um, a 
police officer with Miami Beach Police Department. I'm assuming in the forensic department. 0021 Jessica Salabria. She is a um, Miami Beach sergeant. Now 0024 Nuria Diaz. This is a very important witness and you may not be able to see it. She's under the um she's under the uh, watermark. But this is a very important witness because Nuria Diaz, her position within Miami Beach Police Department is she is the records custodian. So she is going to be someone that the defense will hone in on to really drill down the process in um, identifying where the sperm specimens were located, um, identifying how they handled uh, search and seizure of Brother Polite, all of those things because a lot of time passed. This happened in February. They sent, though she got all of her uh, rape kit done back in February, it was them serving him in May. He gives his DNA in June. And then in August, they return with that this DNA is a match. So it'll be up to Ms. Diaz to explain that process for the jury. Whether they do jury or by judge, it will be up to her to explain that process. Now, 0025. Haley Meyer, this is a chemist in forensic biology and criminalist too. So this is going to be a person that handled those DNA samples and made sure that it was a match prior to um, charges. Clara Diaz, or Kara, sorry, Kara Diaz, she works in forensics as well. Juan Pedroso. Juan Pedroso is the CSI supervisor. Now he is the crime scene investigation unit supervisor. And so is John Riddick the second. Now, from seeing, and this is the completion of who the prosecution is calling thus far. Now, from me looking at this, there are some things that stand out to me. Number one, there are no wives on this list that the state will be calling for um, as witnesses on their behalf. Meaning that if any wife is a witness, they will be being called by Brother Polite. Now, what I'm led to assume is maybe just maybe because I know that Linda's birthday is somewhere around February 11th, something like this. Maybe this was um, a trip for them or maybe the women weren't around or maybe the prosecution is just throwing this out there now, letting him respond because remember, they can always add to their list. Now, this is a really strong list of witnesses because they're calling all technical people. They're calling the crime scene investigators. They're calling the forensic investigators. They're calling the Mount Sinai doctors, the Roxy Bolton Treatment Center doctors. Very interesting. They're calling Carrie Zawatska, the director of operations at the Mondrian, because she's going to be able to tell you um, everything about the hotel, where every camera is situated, how they um, store their cameras, She'll be able to, I even saw, and this is what we'll go into later, that evidence of the hotel receipts, every little thing down to the restaurant, that is what the director of operations will be bringing to the table. So I think that she will definitely be a witness to watch. Let me know, what do you guys think of this witness list? And baby, when I say part two with this evidence, I mean, it's jaw-dropping that they've had all of, that it's all of this. Now, I'm not sure, you're innocent until proven guilty, but from what I see, this is going to be an uphill battle. 
I actually got another printout that I'm gonna um post it to my community page. Brother Polite waived his right to a speedy trial. Now, I've seen a lot of people waive their right to a speedy trial. Most times when you waive your right to a speedy trial, it is because um you are trying to get more time to build your defense. So defense attorneys do that sometimes when they need more time to build their defense. So I thought that was very um, telling that they haven't quite come up with what they're going to do just yet. But you guys let me know what you think. I'm about to dive back into this because I think I'm going to try to stay up late, get another video out for you guys since you've been waiting. Thank you so much to all my new subscribers. Welcome back to the rest of the Snatch Gang. It's Angie Snatch.